First of all, thank you for making our first webinar such an incredible success. The response was beyond anything we could have imagined, and it confirms how in utero has played an important role in bringing the issues of early trauma into mainstream thinking, and how it has inspired me and taught me that we are still at the very beginning of unraveling the miraculous mysteries that have shaped us from conception on, impacting so much of what happens to us for the rest of our lives. So at least once a month now, we will continue exploring the exciting advances that are emerging. I'll be inviting the top practitioners, theorists, and clinicians in the fields of trauma, and especially early trauma from around the world to make available to you the cutting edge methodologies that are being developed to resolve these earliest challenges. In the meantime, I hope you find these highlights of our first webinar informative, intriguing, and enjoyable. And I very much look forward to your thoughts and comments. Thank you. I'd like to re-examine a couple of aspects of in utero. First, and I'd say most importantly, the tone of the movie. We found, as the film came out and began to move around the world, that it was really valuable, extremely valuable, in the psychology sector for adults not so helpful for pregnant women. You know, because science can often deliver tough, bad news. And in utero is, I think, quite tough. Intrauterine life is not a paradise, as some people try to make us believe. This substance feels every little feeling that the mother feels. This is something that we're just beginning to explore gene by gene. Human beings are affected by the environment as soon as they have an environment. And that means as soon as we're implanted in the womb. Yeah, I did find it dark and I did think like, oh my gosh, what a, what a, um, a project ahead to sort of change the whole way that we look at pregnancy and how we should be ushering new beings into the world. And I think one of the things about being a good enough parent is later on being able to go, I screwed up. I screwed up, I screwed up, I screwed up. And you're not the problem. And I'm could appear to be the problem, but I'm not the problem either because of where I came from. I think one of the things that I feel more and more comfortable about, which I didn't feel when I made the film, was there now is a solution. And if there's a solution, you can then look at the problem. If there's no solution, if there's no way out, then you don't want to look at the problem. You want to just live in fantasy. I think that it's important to know that whatever has happened can now be cleaned up and that any kind of guilt is senseless. You know, and any kind of blame, even on parents, is useless because the minute you start to study it, you're going to go back another generation and another generation and another generation. Who are you going to blame? There's, there's no one to blame. It's just, and that's where science is, I think, so valuable. Stop blaming anybody. Let's just start to fix it, which I found, we found very valuable, Kathleen and I, which we discovered. And that's one of the great things about filmmaking is prenatal bonding, which comes out of Seattle. And it's a really, they're wonderful practitioners. We can give you details later. Prenatal bonding is all about connecting with that unborn child and realizing that um, there is a communication that's going on on three levels. One is just the physiological level of um, the umbilical cord and the chemicals that are going to this baby when you feel stressed out, the baby's feeling stressed out, directly linked to you. When you feel joy, the baby's feeling joy. You wanna work on that, that's what prenatal bonding does. You can then talk to the baby play with the baby, um, that's a lot of what prenatal bonding is about. You really start to talk to the baby and visualize it now. And the last form of communication is just the thoughts. The thoughts you have are being picked up by the, 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 the unborn baby. Going back to the film is that at the end of the film, it talks about love. When you start to lift off the damage, you get to a much more loving state of mind. And love in that sense is not only a feeling, it's also a set of actions. It's also a set of relating. It's above all, 
a constant seeking to understand the other. When a baby is understood, that baby is loved. When the mother puts the baby to the breast and the baby's hungry, that baby is loved. When the mother picks the baby up and holds it and pats it, and that's what the baby wanted, the baby's loved. Being understood is being loved. It's all about love. Okay, that's great. But what does that mean on a clinical level? But the problem with the film in the end is that the Matrix has such a dark tone. Up to the 50s and even the 60s, uh, in Europe, babies were operated without anesthesia. Babies don't experience and don't feel. That was the general opinion, and that they forget everything. And so you can let them cry and they forget it. I love that movie but it captures in incredible ways the process of being in utero, the cinema, and being born. The moment when Neo is unplugged is quite a moment. I think it's just as terrifying for a patient because they're facing the moment of their initial trauma. And most importantly, it's talking about how a unborn baby and a young baby, or all of us, survive trauma by living in fantasy. It's really saying, listen, each person doesn't realize that they're plugged into their own imprint. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. This is it. You think you are living your life. But really, you're not. And what Neo discovers is that life is a fantasy. In a way, that's what the power of denial does. It keeps you from really living your life. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. You've split off your personality. You've taken on an enormous portion of your mother's. So it's not really you. And, and I think the concept of constructing a fantasy, as it says in the movie, but it kind of gets lost, I think, a little bit, is that this is just really a little baby constructing a fantasy. This is really a baby's fantasy. After nine years, you know what I realize? Ignorance is bliss. And in the end of the movie, if you've seen it, um, Neo um, uh, ends up having a battle, normal filmmaking, with with the villains, with the um, with the people who are creating this fantasy. But these villains are really little babies. In the Matrix, there's a whole scene where there's a battle, and. I would say the battle is between Neo and a terrified baby, which is, are you going to be able to change things? See, every time a person wants to change something, the, the baby that's afraid steps in and he says, I can't change this. This saved me. This preserved my life. You want me to change this? You must be crazy. And it's not so polite. This is that what has to happen is the baby needs to be loved. The baby needs to be loved, embraced, hugged. That it's all about trauma is all about the lack of connection. Trauma takes place when, particularly early on, when the mother or someone else, but particularly the mother, is unable to, not even her fault, and she may even be trying, to bond with the baby. How do we actualize love in a clinical way? In a way, that becomes the really important question. Um, to move away, how do we actualize it so we can move away from these you know, debilitating and even addictive fantasies? And how do we then clean up this? How do we clean this up? If there's a connection between mother and baby, and there are issues, if that connection is, is solid, 
any trauma can be processed. Everything looks great and they become a drug addict. Another child is in a war, profoundly traumatized, profoundly, you know, overwhelmed, you know, maybe a parent died, terrible things. Child turns out to be fine. If the mother is loving enough, then anything that might appear to be a trauma, which is you can't, you can't escape, you can't flee, you can't navigate or fight, you have to freeze and go into fantasy. And we'll go into that a little bit more later. So, but if there is a parent there, or if there's a sense that a parent's nearby, there is a sense of safety. If a bomb drops next door to you and a mother or father or someone is there protecting the child, that's a very, very different experience than being a child on the Upper West Side of New York where just nannies are taking care of them. And there are no parents there and they're traveling all over the place and they're doing whatever they're doing. That's a child who is being traumatized. So it's all about connection. It's all about connection. You need to find the absolute truth and you need to trust your instincts and slowly get to the truth and be a scientist about it. Don't rush to a conclusion. You know, um, that's what we're about on a core level. We're about balancing instinct and this incredible process that human beings have to sense other human beings' pain. But we also want to be clear about what the truth is because the truth sets you free. That's what happens. The truth sets you free and lies make you sick. Lies, the lack of truth makes you sick, bewildered, lost. The body knows. The body knows. Um, so storytelling and my love of storytelling. We were getting the film finished. The film went out and we began to do, you know, festivals and all these kinds of things around it. We were in Europe and Paris. Um, and we, in the late, late in the summer of 2016, we got invited to Amsterdam for a panel that was using in utero to explain a psychological method called IOPT, Identity Oriented Psychotrauma Theory. A mouthful and actually quite interesting. And then in December of 2016, a woman, Christine Wong, who was an IOPT facilitator from Singapore, flew to Los Angeles to interview us and then offered to do a session for each of us. Then I did my session. And I can say right now, that session changed my life, period. After 50 years of every modality, everything, after having exposure to everything, that session changed my life. What came up out of it was so impactful that, and, and so precise about what my problems were that I was pretty shocked myself, but it was done relatively gently so I could handle it. Um, but I was amazed by it. Um, then a few weeks later, um, the people he had met in Amsterdam, one in particular, Marta Thorsheim, called me and asked if I would like to come to Oslo in early January of 2017 and film some of their sessions because Franz Rupert, who was the founder of IOPT, was going to be doing an international workshop there um, and was working with IOPT facilitators. Um, we call them ID sessions here in the United States, um, but uh, so ID facilitators, IOPT facilitators, all from all over the world who were coming to meet with him. And would I come and, you know, take a day and shoot them. Now, um, but what we're going to do now is just watch the first three or four minutes of that session that I did. So we're going to we're going to show you a little bit of that. I've been more or less in therapy since I was in college, so that's what's brought me to this room, I think. I wasn't really ready to do what I thought I should do, which was go back to my in utero time. And then it began to really rise up for me. I need to deal with the time when my brother and I were sent away. I remember going through my head. He's like, to be sent away. When did, they, when did they send? They sent me away. They don't send I away. They send me away. But I wrote 
what happened when my brother and I, and the second I wrote I, no, 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 that's not right. Grammatically, it should be me. And then I went, it's me, and I underlined me. When it happened, my brother and I went away. If you erase your I out of the intention, it means a lot. Me is uh, the person that is related to the brother, related to the mother, related to the family's uh, members. So it was clear that um, it was not yet possible for him to be I. You be brother. too close. <laughs> and he turned out to be my brother. I mean, everything, everything he did. It's like my part of me is, it's here and the part of me is here. I'm feeling like I'm in way over my head already. My thought is, so how can I ex escape? Hmm. I think I need to get me up here. And I remember thinking, there's somebody I want to be up to be me, um, and I know who she is. I knew it, was a, it had to be a woman. Would you be me? Right away there was a resonance, I mean, right away, right away. I feel completely drawn to your eyes, that's the first thing, and um, um, that makes me safe. And I feel I want to come closer to you, and yeah, I should, I feel I should be um, confused in male-female, mm. but there is also something that's com correct or that is uh, the same between us. I feel young and small. Yeah. Sometimes I forget that he's there. He's littler than me. He's one and a half. How are you doing over there? It's, it's something with my face. It's like uh, I have a face which are almost like my hand. I get anxious and um, a bit more sad when you forget about me and are <laughs> involved <laughs> with him. Maybe my. Would you be my? What's going on here? What's happening? What's going on in my, my psyche? I'm, I always, the word psyche makes me nervous, but not entirely anymore. It's what's going on in this organism that I am. So I was absorbing my mother. My I was a mother, and it wasn't even an I, it was a me, which is, a, is something that's acted upon. So all these nuances begin to show up in this work. On the other hand, my mother and that woman was exactly like my mother, kind of frozen. She was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And my brother, who I adore, who is a wonderful, wonderful guy, has never been able to separate really from my mother's died and all that, but he has been, he still has looks at her in a way, metaphorically. Yeah, how, how do you find the question to ask? Well, I can even do it with you for a moment. What do you want right now, Sai? What do you want? Right, right now? now? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think to find sense of direction. Okay, so what's the sentence? Uh, I want to find a uh, direction. So pick three words out of that. Pick three of the words. Um, say I find and direction. Okay, but what you would do next was turn to Jackie, for instance, and say, will you resonate with the word I? Mm -hmm. We're not going to do this too long, but we can do it for a moment, just for like three minutes, just to get a feel for it. Okay, Malik, what are you feeling? I'm feeling um, say very unsure, very confused. I feel a lot of pressure. Okay. Um, Jackie, what, what do you, how do you feel? I feel lost. So I'm searching for a key to get unlock the door. It's just a little taste of what happens. So we would do this for about an hour and there'd be more and more things going on. Or, or they can have a sentence, they can have a paragraph. 
that's, that's whatever they want to have it be. Then you have to pick three words. And the picking of the three words and the picking of the resonators is, again, the, the organism is making this massive decisions that are beginning to be picked up. So let's, let's put up the, the model, the trauma, to sort of get a little deeper into um, the theory. We're not going to get too deeply into the theory because there's a tremendous amount of theory around this. Ultimately, you want to, if you're going to become a facilitator, you want to know the theory so you can forget it. What is trauma? And we've sort of talked about it already, but I'm going to repeat it. Trauma is when you cannot escape the situation. You can't navigate it. You can't fight it. You can't do anything. You can't run away you're caught. And there is a real possibility that you'll die because the emotions are so intense, so intense and so terrifying that you could, particularly when you're young, you could die from it. And later on, so for instance, someone's in a war and they're caught in a bombing. Um, what happens is the system emotionally when confronted with all the chemistry that's going around the terror is being wounded by, has to absorb that trauma. So the terror just sweeps through the body. I can't run, I can't do anything, I'm gonna get killed, I'm gonna get killed, I'm gonna get killed. And you feel that, that sense, the existential sense is I'm gonna die. And you could die because the chemicals are so powerful. Now, what happens next? So you split, you, that part gets split off, it cracks, it splits. And the next part that shows up is the survival part. Um, and that represses the trauma, the trauma experiences. You forget the trauma. And one of the things that people think is, why don't, why don't I remember these traumas? Well, when you're going through a trauma, what you're trying to do is forget it. I'm not here, I'm not here. There was a, a, a patient that I was, um, uh, who my mentor was working with who said, I was never molested. I was always on the roof of the house. So, you know, that's the dynamic that unfolds. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. My family is wonderful. My family is wonderful. You know, I didn't, was the car accident. People forget car accidents. All these things, you forget it. And the survival part, sort of like in the matrix, creates a fantasy and works hard to keep that in place. Um, so for instance, I'll just go back to my session. My survival strategy when I was three and a half years old with a brother that was one and a half years old in a situation where the, we're gonna be good little boys. We're gonna be, we're gonna be good, 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 good little boys for the rest of our lives. And we never quite got out of that for a long, long time until I'd done a lot of work. Um, and, and so, so we can get more into survival strategies, but the last part from all of this is the healthy part, what we call the healthy part. So the, 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 the trauma is buried, the survival part protects it, almost like a scar protects it from knowing it, so that the rest of the system can live a normal life. If it's very young, can learn to, to language, can go to school, can do all these things. Um, and though that's what happens with with trauma is that you end up with what's presenting itself both to the world and to one's consciousness as a healthy part. There are, the problem with that of course is that you're not working with your full self. You're not working with all of you and in fact one of the metaphors is when a hand grenade was thrown into a camp of soldiers there was one soldier sometimes that would jump on the hand grenade and, and, and die to protect everyone else. In other words, the best parts of you, the best parts of you take on the trauma and you lose that part. That part is buried. It's a young part. It's a beautiful part. It, it, it sacrificed itself so that the other parts could continue. So, so these splits take place and these survival strategies take place and these splits are what you're seeing in this work. So, so let's just continue with the story. We sort of lost train a little bit of that. So I, at this point, was starting to do the work, was starting to, um, starting to learn about this because I started to travel to Europe and 
do the course with Franz in, in Munich and Oslo. While I was still trying to get my graduate program finished, an MFT degree, I started, and, and then at that point, I also became, I founded the Identity Development Institute in Los Angeles, and I used my production office for doing it. Um, while I was now raising a toddler, now, those are all, you know, to some degree, we're, we're looking at a survival strategy right there that started back when I was a little kid. You know, I'm now with my little brother, I got to work, 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 work. So I work, 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 work. And some of it's very good. We don't want in any way, in any way, put down survival strategies, which is why in the end, those of you who've seen in utero, why I have a problem with the way Matrix is represented in the film. I think it's very valuable. but. But that demonizing, in a way, of the survival strategy of living in fantasy is not helpful. That's a little child's solution. That child needs to be loved and held, not attacked. But I think we want to be honoring survival strategies that all three parts are healthy. Now, as all this was unfolding, I began to meet more and more people who, like Malik and a lot of other people, um, Elena's on as well, um, and we have now put together, four years later, a really professional infrastructure. We have a well-developed training program and a clear mission for the future, all of which are, I think, in some ways, to, to my surprise, I think, because you can be in Hollywood and you can make movies, you don't have to be an adult. <laughs> there are a lot of people that aren't. But we have been functioning as adults. So we now have a clear mission. And our mission is to grow a community of practitioners, researchers, and educators who are early trauma-informed across North America. So that doesn't mean you have to become a practitioner, although I highly recommend it. But it does mean that you start to think about early trauma-informed in your life. So that if you're pregnant, you begin to understand your own early trauma, and that way you, you begin to diminish its impact on your, your, your developing child and on your child when, when he or she is born. We want to bring to light the importance of early trauma. So trauma itself is all over the psychological sector. What we are focused on is early trauma. Early trauma from conception and even some transgenerational issues before that. From, from conception through pre-verbal development. This is the time that ID sessions can go back to. I mean, you can see already, we were back to one-year-old where when I was resonating the one-year-old, I couldn't really quite understand some of the, the conversation that went on that, um, that Fine was, was doing, which is very much what can happen with the one-year-old. So we get to the core of the matter. Um, getting to the core of the matter allows these early traumas to be processed, an open space for each of us to live with more authenticity, power, and creativity. Solving the problems humanity faces today requires leaders who are cognizant of the profound and long-lasting impacts of early trauma. The way we begin is the way we develop. We are a global community of developed and developing human beings to move from traumatized and traumatizing societies to health-promoting and healthy societies requires a worldwide change in prenatal, pre perinatal, and early childhood care, and space and a framework for adults to process their early traumas. Our aim is to contribute meaningfully to both these requirements to bring about positive change at, 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 at both the global and the individual levels. So, 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 if you're interested in the training and want to learn more, I'm doing a free webinar every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time until the end of January. Um, also, we have online workshops every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We do two ID sessions in each of the workshops, um, which are just as effective online as in person, which is one of the, the benefits we got out of this crazy pandemic, uh, that, that things work as well online. But, but in the theme of being a filmmaker, I thought we should more or less end with what we could maybe consider a film which is about 16 minutes long and will give you an idea of a session that just happens, um, we cut it a while ago, to go back to um, the, in utero, um, uh, the in utero time in a very, very precise and, and powerful way. Um, I freeze Mutter Lieber 
is the sentence of intention, and Mutterliebe means mother dear in German. Okay, my sentence of intention is I freeze Mutterliebe and I'm ready. Freeze, I want to start with you. What can you resonate? Well, let me start with the body. It's like shivering all the way through. And it's it's like I need to like bend down and it feels like I'm it feels like pure horror. And the image that comes up, I don't know if you know the picture, the screen by Edward Munch. You know where mm -hmm. the figure is like. Yeah. Do you have a sense of age? No, I don't. I assume I'm very small. I feel like I can I can still be wiped out. I can still be eliminated. Maybe I'm very very small. Maybe I'm in the womb. I don't know. Maybe I'm like afraid of a feeling from another person. Actually. Say that again, please. I'm I'm afraid of a feeling from another person towards mm. me. Oh, I'm afraid of like, or maybe a or other person. I'm afraid of their feeling towards me. Do you know who that would be? Clearly my mother, mm. but maybe also my father. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I could easily be just like wiped out and become part of the background that is black. Yeah becoming part of the black back background. I don't know if our parents like fought a lot when, when we were in the womb, because I feel like they're like talking a lot and there is a lot of conversation or action going on and it feels like I'm not seen. So I might, I might, I'm afraid that I'm getting eliminated yeah. because I'm not seen. Well, what I can tell you, what I know for sure is that I, that I don't recall my parents being at peace at any point in their life. They've been always fighting. So what you're telling me makes, would make sense, actually, based yeah. on what I experienced. Evo, just be with this part. Just see this part. That's all right now. Not even many words are needed. Just, just be with this part of you that's never been seen by anybody before and it was so bad they were so distracted that you might have faded into the black and gone away i see you there is a slow movement happening with me especially when you say that there is like a little bit of light coming into my darkness. It's been something that I've been looking for so, so, so long. Because I know that I'm confused if I even exist or not. If I even, I, I, I don't even know if I made it out of this darkness. Uh, Mutter Liebe, what, what can you resonate? Well, um, I haven't felt a lot of anything. Um, very neutral. Um, but the, the idea of freedom keeps coming up and just, just this need for freedom. Um, And it just, I, I really wasn't hearing a lot of what Freeze was saying. It was just it was this distant voice. Um, and I was just really enjoying the sound of the rain falling. It's just a little tap, tap, tap on the, the roof. This idea of uh, being outside and, and, and quiet and peace and nature and... Um, 
I kept finding my attention going to that. You look kind of sad. I don't feel sad. I feel nothing. Yeah, that, that's that's what I heard in the beginning. That there's that there's just a sense of numbness around you. Not numbness. Just nothing. Nothing. Nothingness. Nothingness. Not numbness. Nothingness. Do you have a sense of age? Mm, the number 12 is coming up. Now I'm starting to feel frustrated. Why is that? I don't know. But I'm starting to clench my teeth. That's something that I do a lot. Uh, I, what can you resonate? Well, um, <clears throat> Um, I really liked hearing your words say the, I liked hearing your voice say the sentence. I like the way you say, you said, um, Muter Liebe. It's just really soft. Um, and I feel, I feel like I'm the most grounded person here. I feel kind of impatient listening to all this banter. I can I almost feel like I'm watching a Woody Allen movie with like meaningless chatter. When this whole session first started and I felt very sympathetic when you were talking to Freeze and I teared up a few times especially when you were you know validating how she's feeling you know I wanted to give her some of the color in my that surround me because everything's black and white and I, I want to give her some of my blankets because it's cold here too but I have lots of blankets I have my dog and I'd like to give her my dog to keep her warm and help her feel safe. Mm. Um, but I also realize there's not much there's not much else I can do. So I just feel kind of stuck here and frustrated. I feel like no one's getting to the the meat. Freeze is reacting to this. Freeze I'm reacting to everything that has been said ever since you left me. Yes, I've been seeing all oh. three. She's very, she's very expressive. Please share. I'm just so frustrated because you're connecting with Mutter Liebe like, <laughs> and you both are so aloof. I need both of you is what I, what I thought like from the get-go. I don't know if I need Mutter Liebe that much anymore after she talks so much about nothingness, but you're you're so aloof, you're talking about peace and harmony and meditating and rain and blah, 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 blah. I just need you to connect with me. And I don't know who Mutter Liebe is. I don't even know if that's like a part, is that you, is that mother? I don't know. I feel like that, that needs to be like, put everything on the table. Say that. Say what we need. I think what you're saying is true, actually. Yeah. It sounded very much like my mother, who's just incapable of connecting really and level, like with her emotions towards me. Yeah, look at how she looks at us. It's like, uh, I, I'm in a trance or something. I don't know. But I got to say that's the same with you. Like you talk about like a whole bunch of things like a avoiding feeling feeling me when you talk to her you're you're confirming what she's doing you know do you think um it might make sense to bring in your mother to see if we don't shake this up a little bit see what happens yeah why not okay freeze what happens for you <laughs> i just have to laugh now we bring in a man to be mama 
I don't know. It's not getting any better here. I'm sorry that I had to laugh, but it's like me in resonance. Like I have like Mutterliebe who's like not there. I have a man as a mom. I don't know. It's just all mixed up. It actually, per- it actually perfectly represents my my situation. <laughs> it's it's exactly how it was. It's actually absolutely perfect. You mean that was Mama down there, the man? Yeah, like my mother was literally like a few weeks after birth. She was like hardcore working again, and then I was with a man who was supposed to be Mama. It's just. <laughs> It just perfectly fits that. <laughs> wow. It's a painful picture, man. No, it's just yeah. I I can totally see my, my childhood there. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry, but I don't think we get anything from the two of them. Mama, we just brought you on. What what do you have to say to this? How do you fit into the picture? Just looking at a picture of a a little girl sitting on a tree. And I'm like, I just want to be that little girl sitting on the tree. And, And you and this, whatever's going on over here, I'm just like, I want to be off doing my own thing. I I don't have, you know. Do you think you're like a man or a a woman? I I don't know, but I, I definitely don't feel particularly feminine or womanly. That that's for sure. I even kind of want to climb the tree like a boy would climb the tree, you know. I, what can you add to this? Well, I, I really just wanted to give you guys a big hug. And I, I wanted to say that earlier, but I didn't want to interrupt you both. But I wanted to give you, you and Freeze a big hug. And, <clears throat> you know, even though, like, it, it was nice to laugh at the absurdity of Mama. But I also, I also like hearing both of you say that word. I like hearing both of you say mama. Like the, the, the way you say it. Just the speed of it and everything. Mama? Yeah. It's nice. Um, but and I, I was definitely able to laugh with you both. But I wanted to give you both a big hug. Just to you know, let you know that you're safe and everything's okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I can really feel that. I can really feel that I. That feels very motherly, also. So, Eva, maybe say, I want to give myself a big hug. I want to give myself a big hug. I want to give myself a big hug. Mm. And now I can also see what, 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 what the need behind this is. It's warmth and closelessness, being close. Makes me very sad to realize that I didn't have that. Makes me sad too. I think we're at a very good place right now to just be with this and not go any further. This is really, really important. Child doesn't need intellectual talk. Child doesn't need 
fancy toys or or so-called peace. A child, we all need a big, big hug. Hugs all the time. And that came from you. That came from your part. That came from your eye, Ivo. Not from a mother, not from anyone else who never was able to give it to you, who's whatever it means that you picked three female parts and you ended up having your mother be a mom. It, it almost doesn't matter now, just let it all go. Because really all that's needed now is what you can give yourself. That's why mama sounds so nice to I. You're the mama now. You can do that. I will give myself the hug I never received. Lots of hugs. Evo deserves lots and lots and lots and lots of hugs. So just be with that for a little bit with these two parts. I think this is a good place to to take in this very important want. I think one of the things we talk about a lot is be skeptical. It's critical to be skeptical. I am wary of people who embrace this work wholeheartedly. So it's about finding the part in you that is able to bring the truth to the surface because all these parts are doing is waiting they're just waiting to have somebody be prepared to give you a blanket when you've never had one and and um and that's why i love this work that's why i've sort of basically left somewhat left hollywood and and let my kids take it over and do this because to me this is is just amazing amazing stuff but be skeptical. Be skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. So that's sort of, that's all I got. Anyone else have any questions? <laughs> except, oh, except the thing is, come, come on Wednesday if you're interested. You know, I do want facilitators. I want, you know, you know I think we want to get this out into the world. It's a, it's a fun, amazing process. And um, as you do this work, you learn more about yourself and you feel better and better about, you know, my life has utterly changed since, since doing this work. So, um, so, so come on Wednesday if you, if you want and you can, or come next Wednesday. I'm going to be doing it until the end of January. Very good. Really a pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm going to stay on until all you've gotten off. So just sort of <laughs> around here, but so, so go now. <laughs> Thank you.